Okay, so if you recall where we left off last week, we had been talking about various phases of Java streams, and I'd given you kind of a high-level overview. We looked at the simple, uh, some of the simple search gang program features, and I talked very briefly about some of the key points. And what we're going to do now is we're going to walk through the different phases of a stream, starting with the splitterator portion. And the reason we're talking about splitterators right now is that your next assignment, which has been put out and is due on Thursday, has a little bit of splitterator part in it, so it's important to have a pretty good idea how it works. Um, make sure you watch the video. I released the video the other day over the weekend. The skeleton should be out. There should be tests. Everything should be ready to go. Okay, so basically, uh, let's talk about splitterators first. You'll see in a second while we talk about splitterators first. And the basic idea of doing this is to be able to um, talk about how the source of a stream is converted and, and used properly. So a splitterator is a funny combination. I think it's called a portmanteau. It's a combination of two words, which means splittable iterator. And this was introduced in Java 8. And uh, a, splitter, a splitterator can be used as both an iterator and a splitter. So let's talk first about the iterator part. So the, as an iterator, you can use a splitterator to traverse the elements in a source. And that's, of course, why we're talking about this first, because we're going to talk about how we get our source, whatever our source is, turned into a stream. So the source could be various things. It could be a collection. It could be an array. It could be various kinds of things. Let's take a look at a simple example, which occurs in EX13. And uh, in this particular case, the source is going to be an array list of strings. So once again, we are. Uh, quote Shakespeare, famous Shakespeare quote. So we're going to have a list of strings that correspond to this quote. And what we want to be able to do for at least this first part is iterate through every element and print out each element one at a time. So the way you do this is you start by calling the splitterator method on the list. And you'll see over and over again that every built-in collection in Java contains a splitterator method. So you can always convert things uh, from a collection into a uh, splitterator by using the splitterator method. So we say, quote, quotes the list dot splitterator. That returns a splitterator. And then what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the try advance method. And try advance is basically this combination of has next and next. If you recall the iterator that you implemented for assignment 1b, it had two methods, one to check whether you were done and one to get the result if you were not done. And so in this particular case, the try advance method combines both of those features. So it returns true if it managed to get an item, and it returns false if it doesn't. And if it returns true, then it's going to return the result through the parameter that's, or it's going to do something through the parameter that's passed to it. In this particular case, we're going to print the output simply by passing in the print method reference of, system, of the system.out object. So this splitterator will just print the results. We'll talk later about other things you can do with the parameter that's passed into try advance. OK. Um, a splitterator can also split or partition the elements of a source, break it up into the various chunks. And we'll talk in a second about why you'd want to do this. It's not entirely obvious at first glance. This example is just going to illustrate how it works. It's not going to motivate at the moment why you would want to do this. But we'll, we'll start off by just saying how it works. So in this approach, we're going to go ahead first, and we're going to call splitterator on the original quote, just like we did before. So quote is this list of strings. We splitterate it. Now we have a splitterator. So we get a splitterator for the entire array list. And then we go ahead and call the try split method on the original splitterator. So remember, here we, we got a splitterator, which I'm calling second half for reasons that will become clear in a second. And then down here, you can see we say second half dot try split. And try split has an interesting semantics. It's a little hard to understand what it's doing. But basically what it does is it returns a splitterator that covers the elements in the underlying collection that will no longer be covered by the invoking splitterator. Now, that seems a little bit mysterious. And it's one of those things where until you actually 
implement a split erator, it's a little bit hard to figure out what the semantics are, which of course is why we're going to implement a split erator in the next assignment. So let's take a look at tri-split and kind of talk about it in more detail. This is pseudocode for what tri-split does. And it, they almost always, all the tri-split implementations almost always look something like this. So uh, as we're going to see, what's going to happen here is if the input, and an input would be something that would be understood by the splitterator, it would be a local field. If the input is less than or equal to the minimum size, and we'll talk about what that could be in a second, then return null. And so what that means, that's basically the basis case for a recursive call. So if we're at the point where we can't split the input source up into anything smaller, we reach an atomic size, like the size of one, then at that point we're done, we return null. And returning null is an indication to some higher level framework that we reach the end and to do something special at that point. We'll talk about that later. And so the way this is going to work is that try split is going to be called recursively until all the chunks are less than or equal to the minimum size. So we're trying to essentially have the basis case for the recursion. Now, for your assignment, the, the basis case is when you've got yourself an array list who's got a size of one, or you've got one element in the array list because you've split it up to the point where it's got one. So keep that in mind when you implement your split array. If you've not reached the end, then what we're going to do is we're going to try to split the input up into two chunks. And ideally, a splitterator should split the original input source in half. So that's the best thing to do. That's the best case. And the reason why that's the best case is by splitting things in half, you'll end up with essentially a tree of splitterators that is no more than log n deep, based on properties you probably remember from your data structures course about how splitting things in half, how many times you can split something in half till it, till it reaches an atomic size. And so it would be log n if you think of this as a tree. So we're going to split things into two chunks. And certain data structures, most notably arrays, split very nicely in half. Because you can take the beginning point and the end point, divide by two. You find the midpoint. And then the left half is one chunk. The right half is another chunk. So that's basically how the splitting should take place. Now, not every data structure splits evenly or efficiently. And we'll talk more about that later. But luckily, array lists do split nicely. So uh, now that we've got ourselves split into two chunks, now we have to do something with each chunk. So as you're going to see here, the right chunk is defined by updating the state of this splitterator object. So the object that we just called try split on, remember everything's an object in Java. So if you call try split on something, you called it on an object. So in that particular case, we're going to call try split on the object. And it's going to split itself by doing two things. First, it's going to update the right-hand side. So the state of this object will be updated to say, now my chunk is the right half. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make a new splitterator that will cover the left half. And of course, you have to be very careful not to get these off by one errors here where you miss an element and so on. But if you do this correctly, you end up with the object upon which try split was called having now the right half of the original input. And now you create a new splitterator, which you're going to return as the result of calling try split, which will cover the left chunk. And hopefully, left chunk and right chunk make sense. If you think about an array, if you split it in half, you have the left half and the right half. So the left chunk, the right chunk. So that's basically the way things work. We'll, we'll talk more about splitterators in more detail later when we get into other parts of, of uh, Java 8. But I wanted you to have a good idea of how this works so it would make sense what you're trying to do uh, with the overall program that you're doing for assignment number two. OK, so now that we've got ourselves two splitterators, one that covers the first half and one that covers the second half, what we're going to do is we're now going to call some methods that will perform actions for each element in that entire splitterator. So here, for each element that's in the first half and then for each element in the second half, we're going to go ahead and print the value 
using the print method reference in the system.out object. OK, any questions about any of that? So that's the basic idea of splitterators. Obviously, you have to figure out how to make that work for your array splitterator, but it's, it's not too different from the pseudocode that I just gave you. Um, you just have to figure out how that works. OK, so given we get sort of a hokey example here, but if you, if you think about what this is really used for in practice, it's used for Java 8 parallel streams where we're going to end up taking the input and splitting it up into chunks. And then what we end up with when we're, as we're doing the splitting, we're going to end up with stuff that can be processed sequentially by different cores. So that's kind of the big picture view of what's going on here. OK, um, so again, you can use an, a splitterator to traverse elements of a source, just like an iterator, just a little bit cleaner. And then you can use it to partition the elements. Right now, we're just going to focus on traversal. So for the discussions for the next you know, couple of classes, we'll focus on iterator. And then when we get to parallel streams, we'll talk about splitting. Yes, sir? You're going to implement both the try split and the try advance methods. Exactly. Great question. So the question was, um, you know, the, the, the general question is, how does this try split method decide how to split things up? And then I think the more specific question is, how do we do it for the assignment? Uh, so for the for the, the bigger question, for the general question about how does it know? It knows because it's, that's whoever programs try split and try advance. They have to write the logic for that. Certain data structures, in particular data structures like uh, arrays, are really easy to split in half evenly and quickly because you just take the, you know, take the beginning index, the end index, add them together, divide by two, and that gets you the midpoint. So in general, data structures that are arrays split very nicely. Data structures are things like linked lists or hash maps. They're more tricky to split. Fortunately, your assignment doesn't have that right now. Um, so the answer to your, the general question is it all depends on try split. The answer for your specific question about assignment uh, 2A is you'll have to implement try split and try advance in order to do basically the logic we described here. So this is just kind of pseudocode. But if you were to look at the actual implementation, it would conform almost exactly to this algorithm here. Yeah, that's a good question. Other questions?